morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church on this Sunday morning, this first Sunday after Epiphany. I'm Pastor Fritz Fowler, and I have the joy of serving as the lead pastor here at Trinity, and it is my joy to welcome you this morning. If you're new or haven't been here in a while, welcome and welcome back. We're grateful that you are here. Happy New Year to you. We thank you for joining us today. There are connection cards in the racks in front of you. They're either purple or yellow, and we invite you to fill it out as little or as much as you would like, and we would like to be able to reach out and just say thank you for joining us and being a part of our worship service this morning. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us online on our uh, website or on YouTube or on Facebook. If you're joining us on Facebook, Marsha, our Facebook host, uh, has shared with you just a brief welcome note as well as the electronic link to uh, fill out the connection card. We hope that wherever you find yourself today uh, that you know that you are surrounded by God's love and that we are praying for you. You can find a copy of our worship service today and or of our bulletin at trinitylansdale.com, trinitylansdale.com. Scroll to the very bottom of the home page and you'll find a link there that you can uh, download the bulletin. Be this morning, we are beginning our newest initiative, Justice Through Music, and so I'd like to introduce to you Joe Wojcik, who's going to share a little bit about us, uh, about this initiative and the racial justice team. Good morning. Um, Trinity Worship and Music Hub and the Racial Justice Ministry Team uh, have joined forces to, bring, to begin a new initiative this weekend. It's called Justice Through Music. Uh, as you may know, Trinity is required to pay royalties to composers and arrangers of religious music selected for our worship services. However, when we sing African American spirituals, this isn't the case. This is because spirituals, many of which are in our hymnal, were composed by generations of unknown enslaved people of African descent who made extraordinary musical contributions that enrich American religious culture. Although we can change the past, we can pay it forward in recognition of this injustice that has existed for hundreds of years. Since the composers of most spirituals are unknown, we set out to find a deserving musical organization where our dollars can make a difference. <coughs> and we believe that the Trenton's Children Chorus is that organization. They provide children in an underserved community with instruction and practice in the transformative power of music. Supporting this chorus is an outreach of Trinity's mission to embrace diversity and to connect all generations to God's family. Our financial donations will be matched by a one-time $1,500 grant from Trinity's Endowment Committee. On the way in, uh, we gave you a, a, most of you I think should have a flyer here, and in here there's more detailed information about the initiative the chorus, and how you can help. Also, there will be an adult forum session on Sunday, January 29th, between the services, which will provide more information about this Justice Through Music initiative. And members of, the of our committee will be available in the lobby if you have any further questions after you, you read the flyer or anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I invite the congregation now to please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercies endure forever. Amen. My friends, trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sins. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us 
that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. My friend, brother, God's mercy makes each of us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us join together now in our hymn of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit, hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you. A reading from Genesis, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and to your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the ones who curse you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the Okamora. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. And so he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by the stages toward Negev. 
Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John? He shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Assembly is invited to be seated, and I'd like to invite forward all of our, uh, our, our young people to come forward for the sermon on the steps. Come on up. You guys can sit on the carpet today. You guys can sit any ways you want on the carpet. I'm going to sit up here. Sit right here on the carpet. Hey, good morning. And you can face me. I, how are you doing this morning? Here comes Adeline. Hey, good morning, Adeline. I want to introduce you to somebody this morning. We have somebody helping out this morning. Good morning, Mrs. Trudy. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to see you guys are here because this morning I have a game. A game? I have a game. Yes. Now, I know. What game is the question? The game I have for you is called Name That Song. All right? Okay, here's, here's the... You've played this before? Yeah, in Oh, in Cherubs. All right. Now, before we get ready... Now, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to... I asked Miss Andrea, could you play a little bit on the piano, you know, the, the tune of a song, while we listen, right? And then we guess. Now, we've got to get our, our ears ready. Are you, can you put your hands up like this? Excellent. Oh, you're so good at this. All right. Uh-huh. And now, wait, wait, one second, Mrs. Um, Miss, Miss Andrea, I will let you know. She's so excited to play the game. She wants to play the game. All right, hold on, Miss Andrea. All right, we're going to put our hands up like this. Rub our, rub our hands. Oh, now, hands are ready. See, we're getting our bodies ready for the listening. Now we cup our ears three times. One, two, three. Put your hands down in your lap. Close your eyes like this. Do you see me closing my eyes? Okay. Miss Andrea, 
We are ready. I see a raised hand right here. Yes. What, what do you guys think? Yes? Thumbs up or down? Oh, look, thumbs are up. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Now we have that first one. Now we're ready. Not yet, Miss Andrea. <laughs> now, let's get ready for our next song. Hands up. In the left. Eyes closed. Miss Andrea, next song, please. Can we say it on the count of three together? Can we say it together? One, two, three. What is it? <laughs> oh, look, we've got some thumbs up. Thumbs up. Excellent, excellent. Okay. You know, those two songs, they actually have people that wrote them. Yes, yes. Uh, Happy Birthday was written by uh, the Hill Sisters. And did you ever write a song with your brother? No, you can do it. All right, now, Frosty the Snowman was written by a guy named Steve Nelson, and he has a friend too. He wrote that. One, let, let's listen to this third song. We've got a third song. Hands out. All right, down in your lap, eyes closed. Let's listen. Miss Andrea, we're ready. Ooh. Can we say it together on three? One, two, three. Whoa! Three out of three. Written by a guy named Joseph, oh, excuse me, Franz Gruber and Joseph Moore. All right, all three of those had composers. Now, look, there's a fourth one, the final one. If you get this one, Perfect score. All right, don't want to put any pressure on your butt, you know. Okay, hands out. In the lap, close your eyes. Miss Andrea, we're ready. Oh, open your eyes. One, two, three. Yes, this little light of mine, I, yeah, yes, let's do that. That was good. You know what is different about that song? There is no composer. We don't know who wrote it. We, we have no idea who wrote that song. You, you know what? Hmm, this is a song written a long time ago, over 100 years. No, <laughs> that was a long time ago. And it's been passed down, we're not really sure, but the really amazing thing about this song was it was sung during the time of Dr. Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement, and it's a song that brings light to darkness. In fact, it talks about how you and you, you and you, oh, and you, oh. <laughs> all have lights that you can bring to the world. Now, to help us with the lights, I thought we could actually sing a verse of this song. And um, are you interested in what I might have here? Yes. Yes? Okay. All right, you, you're not sure about it, right? Really excited? Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You know what I have in here? Some candles, because in this song, we talk about the little light of mine. So we're gonna use these as candles. I would say, um, congregation, if you've got a flashlight on your phone, could you get that out for us? That can be your candle. And you can you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here we so go. Soft. It's soft. Yeah, I know it's a soft candle. Would you like a candle? There. All right. So, <laughs> did it burn you? Okay. All right. So, 
Miss Andrea, we are ready, and it looks like the congregation is ready. Look, hold them high. Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Great job, great job. Just remember, we have a way to let our light shine out into the world. Now, let's bow our heads for a prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God please, help us please help us to remember, to remember that each one of us, each one of us has, a light has a light inside we can shine. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Mrs. Judy. Thanks for coming up, everyone. Oh, yeah, Wiggle Time is over there with Pastor Rick. If you'd like to go to Wiggle Time today, Pastor Rick's over there. It was late August, early September. I forget the, the, the exact date. Um, uh, 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 we had just crossed over the border from Calais, Maine uh, into Canada when I uh, felt a lot of fear and anxiety. I just spent about, I don't know, 45 minutes, close to an hour with um, Canadian Immigration and Customs Control applying for my student visa and I realized, oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? What was I thinking that instead of studying abroad just one semester, I said, let's do all of college abroad. I remember as we arrived on the campus of Kingswood University, the campus was split into two locations. There was part of campus at the bottom of the town's hill and the other part of campus at the top of the town hill. As we began to make our way up through the winding streets of Sussex, my mom looked at me and says, are you sure you want to do this? It's not too late to turn around. And I said, oh yes it is. It took us 17 hours to get here. <laughs> not including our quick pit stop to say hello to Canadian Customs who wanted to know what was in the U-Haul that was behind our minivan as I made my way to college. I remember a few days after you know my parents had left I was walking downtown to head to the Zellers and just filled with fear. I know no one in this country my parents are at the quickest, a 16-hour drive away. There is no going home for the weekend to say, Mom, could you help teach me how to do laundry? <laughs> Thankfully, I knew that already, but the thoughts that go through as you, as you are filled with anxiety and fear, even though it's incredible, you know, I'm in college. I was afraid. It meant letting go of, 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 of my childhood home, my home state, my home country, and embracing something completely brand new that I couldn't wrap my head around. I had had the same doctor for the first 18 years of my life, and now I don't even know how to begin to find a doctor, much less in a foreign country. Yes, it's only Canada, but it's a big deal. You don't meet customs agency when you just go to Penn. <laughs> If you do it right, <laughs> and you're from Pennsylvania, right? We're beginning this week a four-week series that we're titling Transitions, Thriving in the Midst of Change. Where'd this series come from? Last summer, 
I asked you all to fill out what you wanted to hear sermons on. What are topics that were happening in your life that you needed guidance on? And while no one said explicitly, I need to know how to manage the changes in my life, a lot of you wrote things that indicated that the feelings and the experiences you were having were with transitions and with change. Several of you talked about how it's really hard to move past after losing our child. Others of you wrote that I'm a little scared of what's next for me as I begin to think about retirement or when do I know it's the right time to move into out of our home. I don't like being an empty nester. Others of you wrote about how hard it is to lose a loved one, a spouse or another family member. All questions about how do we manage the changes, how do we navigate the transitions in our life. Because the reality is all of us, if we haven't just today dealt with a change or a transition, you're going to. For to be alive is to undergo change and transition. And, and change doesn't just happen in our personal lives, but it happens in our community. It happens in our nation and in our world. It happens here at Trinity. Trinity has undergone a lot of changes in her 141 years here in Lansdale. Change is inevitable. And as people of faith, we believe that even when we die, there is a change that happens. We undergo a transition. And so that's what this series is about. It's my hope, it's my prayer that, that, that you walk out of here in four weeks with practical tools, practical resources to help you manage and navigate the changes and transitions in your life. It might be the loss of a loved one. It might be the loss of a job. It may be not all changes are bad. Some changes are good, like a new child being added to the family. Or retiring, which is generally a positive, a positive change in our life. Or it can be somewhere in the middle. And so that's my hope. If you want to take notes, there's pencils in your pews. We made sure that they were sharpened. There's note cards in there, so that way if you want to, or you can re-watch this sermon as many times as you want as we navigate the sermon series. How many of us, though, that when we hear the story of Abram out of Genesis chapter 12 this morning, know what he was feeling? God comes to him and says, I'm going to take you from the land that your fathers, that for generations has been in your household, and take you someplace new. Someplace you've never been before. We hear in Genesis chapter 12 how Abram has to pack everything up. He packs up all of his household and all of his possessions. He packs up everything, including his family, and begins this journey. God has said nothing to Lot, nothing to anyone else in his family. They're all taking Abram's word for it as they literally uproot their lives and to go and do something brand new. The anxiety, the confusion, the fear. Can you imagine that the first big move in 75 years of your life is to move not just across the street, but to an entirely unknown land? All of us face change and transition in our lives. And so I think the first principle to learning how to navigate transitions is to understanding the difference between change and transition. Change is the external factor. Change is the external circumstance, the, the, the thing that happens outside of us that we have to respond to. Oftentimes, uh, it, might, it might have nothing, we've not made the decision, right? The doctor calls us up and says, I need to see you in my office because your test results came back and we would like to talk, right? The death of a loved one, 
Our employer calls us into the office and says, unfortunately, we're restructuring. And it means that your job is ending. You've reached the age that you can retire. External, whatever that external thing is. Transitions is what happens internally to us our thoughts and our feelings, the ways that we have to respond and to adjust to that change. I love hiking. I imagine um, if I was on a hiking trail and you know, you've planned out your journey or perhaps you enjoy driving, right? The change is the detour sign. The change is the big, the big rock that's in the middle of your trail, something external. The transition is how do I have to respond internally to get around or over or underneath that rock or that change, whatever that external factor is. Let's imagine that, uh, and some of you don't have to imagine because you have lived it, that you lose your job. The change is that you are no longer employed. The transition is how do I cope How do I navigate now that I don't have income? How do I respond to paying my bills? How do I undergo the grief of saying goodbye to colleagues? Or maybe not in some cases, having that opportunity to. The fear of letting go, the fear of the unknown, the loss of a familiar pattern in your life. You know, driving the same way to work for years maybe and losing that ritual. All of this stuff internally. How do I tell my friends? How do I deal with maybe the embarrassment that I feel, the humiliation that I feel, the anger that I feel that I've poured so much of myself into this company and now they're just dismissing me without cause? That's the transitions. For Abram, For Abram, the change is God calls to him and says, you're going to move, and I'm going to lead you someplace new. The transitions is explaining this to his family and his wife, beginning the packing process, hiring the U-Haul of his day to help carry his stuff to this new land. That's the first principle, understanding the difference between change and transition. Change is what happens externally. Transition is the internal process. Number two, I think, in understanding how we thrive in the midst of change is knowing that change almost always follows a predictable pattern. It almost always follows a predictable pattern. And there's three parts to change. The first is the endings. For something to change, something has ended. It may be the the death of somebody we care about. It may be a conversation with our boss. It, It might be that we decide to retire. Whatever that is, something has ended that has caused a change in our lives, either personally, corporately, right? The pandemic. Remember those early days of March 2020 when we first had, first received those reports. Our life as we knew it ended. After the ending comes what researchers call the neutral zone. In the neutral zone, everything can be really confusing. It can be even lonely. It can be filled at time with grief and fear. There can be confusion and anger in the neutral zone. It feels like sometimes we're lost. We're nearly really not quite sure what's next. We can't see what's in front of us, and we're not quite ready to let go of what's behind us, what's ended. It can last depending upon the change for a short time, or it can last years, where we feel like we're wandering around in the wilderness, really not quite sure which way is up. The neutral zone, while immensely difficult and challenging, can also be a time of incredible growth as we adapt to our situation, as we adapt to the changes that have happened, to what has ended. It can be a time of incredible resourcefulness, right? Look at the pandemic. A lot ended 
when COVID-19 entered our lives. But I think we quickly navigated that neutral zone that if you had it already and you have a computer, you downloaded Zoom, right? You adapted to the circumstances to stay in contact with friends and with family. We figured out new ways to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. We figured out new ways how to gather together as a community, all in that neutral zone. While difficult, while sometimes really hard, can be filled with incredible hope and promise and growth. Not just personally, but corporately. I think of when Trinity made the decision that our building could no longer fit the worshiping community. And there was an apple orchard on this process. And if you read the documents, people says, why would Trinity ever move away from downtown, right? They're never going to grow. They're never going to succeed. And here we are, century later, thriving at 1000 West Main Street. And that neutral zone was an incredible hope and promise. And then the third part, or this third part of this pattern, is always new beginnings. New beginnings. As we manage out of this neutral zone, we find ourselves in a new place, changed from when, when we entered the neutral zone. Change almost always follows a predictable pattern of endings, the neutral zone or the wilderness, as Pastor Bill called it yesterday, last week in his sermon, and new beginnings. <clears throat> Look at the story of Abram. The change is that God has come to him. The ending is, is that God has come to send and says, you're going to move and I'm going to lead you someplace new in chapter 12. And then he wanders around. George, when he read that, if you notice the very last line, and Abram made the move in stages. It wasn't immediate. It happened in stages to the land that God was leading him and his family. We know, because we've read the rest of the story, about how this ends, and that eventually Abram is brought to the promised land. And that it, he has a ton of descendants. The third principle of navigating, of thriving in the midst of change, is remembering that God is with you always. In verses 1 and 2, God says to Abram, yes, you're going to be moved. Yes, this is going to be difficult. But then God says to Abram, I will be with you. I will show you. I will bless you. Abram goes to the promise of God, knowing that God will not, be, will not abandon him. Abram actually builds an altar at one point in our story to recognize God's faithfulness, that God is with him in this wilderness, in this neutral zone where it feels like things are turned upside down. The good news is that when we are in our wilderness, God is with us. The same God that was with the Israelites when they were led out of slavery in Egypt and they wandered around, guess where? In the neutral zone for 40 years before they made it to the promised land. Was with them by fire at night and by a cloud during the day. Jesus, we celebrated the baptism of Jesus last week. What happens to Jesus immediately after his baptism? He is driven where? into the wilderness, into the neutral zone to prepare for his ministry, where he is tempted by Satan. And God sends his angels to care for Jesus at the end of that neutral zone and says, I am here with you. They take care of him at the end of that journey before he begins his ministry. The promise that God is always with us. It was in December 1959, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was serving as the senior pastor of Dexter Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. 
the, his colleagues and, and, and his colleagues had asked Dr. King, could you please resign your position and come back to Atlanta? Atlanta is a, you know, a larger city. It'll be a much easier point to manage the civil rights movement if you move back. Dr. King was in a really hard place and he, he wasn't quite ready to leave maybe Dexter and the people of Montgomery, but he really felt called to this new thing that he didn't know how it would end. And the press release that him and his colleagues wrote to the community of Dexter and to the people of Montgomery and in Atlanta, this is what Dr. King had to say. After prayerful consideration, I am convinced that the psychological moment has come when a concentrated drive against injustice can bring great tangible gains. We must not let the present strategic opportunity pass although my change of residence is a painful decision. Talk about a neutral zone. Dr. King does not know what's necessarily next for the movement and is entering into the wilderness, this neutral zone. The newspaper interviewed one of Dr. King's oldest members at Dexter. This is what this member had to say. Reverend King, will not truly be leaving us because part of him will always remain in Montgomery. And at the same time, part of us will go with him. We'll always be together everywhere. The history books may write that Dr. King was born in Atlanta, then came to Montgomery. But we feel that he was born in Montgomery in the struggle here. And now he is moving to Atlanta for bigger responsibilities. The people of Dexter saw their ministry with Dr. King as the neutral zone, as a place of wilderness and a transition, and knew that Dr. King was being called to a new beginning, even in the middle of it met an ending for them. That's the promise of God is that no matter the changes that we are forced sometimes. To confront. God is with us in the transitions. God was with Dr. King. God was with Abram. God was with Jesus. God was with the Israelites in Egypt and in the 40 years in the wilderness, in the neutral zone. And God is with you too knowing that it's not always easy. Changes can sometimes be hard. They can sometimes be really difficult. Sometimes we might want to just stomp our feet, but I don't want change. But the promise is that God will be with us. God will show us and journey with us. If we only listen. If we only listen and come back that God has brought us this far by faith and that with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together our hymn of the day. You're going to need your hymnal. It's 665. Rise, shine, you people. Pages are at the top of the hymnal, 665. Let us sing together.
will continue worship on page five. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries, God of grace. Hear our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend on them, and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. God of grace. In Jesus are the Lamb in Jesus you are the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. God of grace. Your prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. Especially Kathy, Thomas, Carol, Linda, and Marianne. Our prayer list in the bulletin and those we name aloud or in silence of our hearts including Nicholas and his family. God of grace, you are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it feels like a sharp sword or polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. God of grace. Hear our prayer. In every place and time, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God of grace. Hear our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, our God trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with those around you. As you finish sharing the peace with one another, I invite you to be seated. We are going to continue by hearing our choir offer our musical offering this time. If you brought an offering that you would like to give to the church today, there are four baskets here in the front. You're invited to place your offering in the basket, uh, either during Holy Communion or at the end of the worship service. For those of you joining us electronically or prefer to give online, you can do so at trinitylansdale.com.
go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You magnify and adore through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. As we prepare now to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, we invite those of you who are worshiping with us online to prepare your, your, uh, your communion elements, your grape juice, and perhaps your, your, your bread. For those of us here in, the here in the sanctuary, please know that we will have four communion stations, one on e at each of the transepts and two at the head of the aisle. As you come forward, and as much as we, we celebrate, we distribute communion by invitation, please have your hand out with your palm up and we will place a, a, a wafer in the palm of your hand and then move to the side and to dip the wafer into the, into the, uh, into the wine. After communion, if, uh, at each of the pillars in the front here, we do have bowls here for you to, to put your, your, um, your cup in if you should have one uh, for, for, us to recycle, for us to recycle them. Please know that, as always, we have gluten-free wafers uh, here on the brown tables in the front, at the front of each station, as well as alcohol-free cups of grape juice and sterile packets with grape juice and, and uh, the wafer. I invite you to please stand as we uh, begin our celebration with a great thanksgiving. My friends, the Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift thanks to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and your, sing your unending hymn. <laughs> he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it 
and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My friends, come and taste the joy of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite the assembly to please be seated as, there, as our communion assistants come forward. Please know that uh, here at Trinity, this, we believe that this is not Trinity's table, the Lord, Lutheran table, the bishop's table, but this is God's table. So please know that all who are present are invited to come forward to receive the sacrament.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning in worship. We are grateful that you are here. We encourage you to please take home uh, your weekly with you. It's full of information and news and notes, including our Martin Luther Ding, Martin Luther uh, King uh, Jr.'s uh, Remembrance Service today at 3 p.m. at Bethlehem Baptist Church. You're invited to walk with us from t beginning at 2 p.m. from Wissahickon High School to Bethlehem Baptist. You can park there. Uh, it's a little less than a mile uh, together. Our choirs will be singing this afternoon at that service as well as uh, tomorrow morning beginning at 10 a.m. in Heisen Hall is our Rise Against Hunger uh, justice event as we prepare uh, food bags for the food and hungry insecure. The rest of the announcements are in there. Today is um, our civil rights journey continues in room 125-127 with Dr. Jean and Pastor Steve Godshill Myers. Uh, you are welcome to join them uh, for that as they continue to talk. Next week on January 22nd, our visual enhancement team are going to share their proposal with you uh, in between services in room 125, 127. We invite you to come and bring your questions with them as we continue to move forward uh, in, in looking into what it looks like for us to enhance our visual space here in the sanctuary. There is coffee available uh, in the lobby. Uh, as you leave, you're invited to take your coffee into Heisen Hall for conversation or to Sunday school or to faith formation, whichever you would like. Thank you for everyone who has brought your white gifts in. Today is the last day uh, to bring in your gifts. As you can see, as you go out, I invite you to just stop and to place your hand on those white gifts and to make the sign of the cross over those gifts as we bless these gifts today, knowing that they are going to families in our community uh, who would not be able to provide uh, for the diapers and for the formula and for the food and all the items that we've collected. And so to bless them as you leave here today. People of God, I invite you to stand as you are sent out with God's blessing. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Let us sing together this little light of mine.